<clears throat> Ow, I cut my hand. So, it's Michael, welcome to the, oh. Oh, it's a twist top, that's why. It was a twist top the whole time. <laughs> It's a beautiful fall day. I got nothing but time, and we're going for a hike. So, what could possibly? Sorry, this video's late. Good morning, YouTube. It is Michael. It is a peaceful, beautiful day. I'm at my favorite spot in the world. And today, we are looking at none other than Barber, one of the most famous jacket companies of all time. And this is also my first ever Barber. So to say I'm excited, I can't tell if this brownie has peanuts in it. I can't eat peanuts. So anyways, let's get on with the video provided that I can. When I just got this coffee at this place called, oh, this cup is blank. Okay, so we actually have a lot of things to go over in this video, especially silk oil versus thorn-proof wax. What does that mean? There are two very different types of wax jackets that you can buy from Barber. There's a lot of hubbub about them. I did, think I figured it out. There's one thing I can't find any information on, but I'll let you know about that later. I did a waterproof or resistance test in the shower which I'll let you know about. But then I actually saw on the weather, tomorrow it's supposed to rain a ton. So I'm gonna post this video a little late so I can do a real world test of this barber. At 4.22 p.m. ETD, Doppler radar was tracking showers and embedded thunderstorms along a line extending. We'll get into that. And the water resistance of wax jackets and all that stuff. We'll get into fit, why I got the bedale, why I went classic, then all the interesting details on a barber, why you need to get the hood, so much stuff to talk about. And I'm very excited. I think today's gonna be a great day. It's raining. So for the model I got, I got the classic Bedale, and I just want to preface this by saying there's of course a British connotation with barber jackets. I don't really know anything about that, but there's also like this Ivy prep connotation with barber jackets that I also don't really know about that well. I know that barber gives you this pin, this barber pin, and some people put it on, some people don't. It's like scandalous or something. I don't really know, but I'm gonna put it on the collar. I got the Bedale. The slimmed down, more modern version of this is the Ashby, but I figured, listen, I wanna have this jacket for my entire life, so I better get the Bedale in regular cut because I'll probably, eventually, get a little pouch, gain a little weight. It's a little oversized, it's definitely not slim, but when I was trying this jacket on in the store, I brought a flannel and a sweater with me, and I tried them both on while I was wearing this jacket. And when I put the Ashby on, I could feel my flannel, I had plenty of room to move around, but then when I put the bedale on, I literally thought I forgot to put the flannel on, and I was like, I think that's the move. You know, it's funny, the whole point of that segment was to talk about sizing. I didn't talk about sizing. I'm 5'9", 150 something pounds, 55, 52, and I went with a size 38, which is what I usually go for. Like I said, oversized, oh no, no, sorry. I went with a size 36. Usually I go at 38, but this is the 36, and I have plenty of room. So I suggest sizing down one if you can't try it on in person. That's what I did. Unless you're like a very big, we're gonna go in the woods now, and I'm gonna see what happens if I walk through thorns. I'm no weatherman, but this doesn't look to be rain. If you've done anything besides service level research into Barber, you'll know that there are two types of finishes that you can get on the jacket. Thorn proof and silk oil. And there's a lot of debate on what the actual difference is. Some people say it's, ooh, this jacket is definitely... And there's a lot of debate on what the difference is between these jackets and why one is thorn proof and the other isn't. What does that mean? And I did some research. I think I know. Like I said before, there is some info I couldn't find. But for the most part, I really think it's just a difference in how the cotton is actually processed. Although this seems pretty thorn proof. So it's two different types of ways. There's thorn proof, there's silk oil. Silk oil is the original finish that Barber did. And that basically is with uncombed cotton. And you can tell when a Barber jacket is uncombed cotton because you can see it in the texture between thorn proof and silk oil. Silk oil is uncombed. And when someone starts to wear the wax off, where that wear actually is, the cotton or the texture of the jacket without the wax looks a little fluffy, a little fuzzier when thorn proof is very sharp and not as fluffy. And that is because how the cotton is treated, which we'll get into right now. Actually, let me start off with what I don't know. I can't 
find if Barbara uses two different blends in silk oil and thorn proof when it comes to the proofing, like the wax and the oils. But silk oil jackets have this gloss, they look a little oily. Some of the oil actually rubs off for the beginning until you wear the jacket in a little bit more. Thorn proof does not. That is much more waxy and it looks glassy. So I don't know if they use two different blends coming out of the factory, but I do know when you need to get this jacket rewaxed, you use the same product from Barber across the board. On to the big thing, thorn proof versus silk oil. Picture two items, a loosely knit fisherman sweater that looks like this, and then picture a pane of glass. This is an extreme example, but hold on. So picture you have to walk through thorns. One person has glass, the other person has a fisherman sweater. The person with the fisherman sweater is pushing through the woods and the thorns are snagging on all the loops of the fisherman sweater. The person with the glass pane is able to push right through the thorns because it's not getting snagged on anything. It's just glass, so it goes right through. That's an extreme version, but that is the difference between thorn proof and silk oil jackets. The cotton is processed in two different ways and thorn proof gives you the benefit of having that glass pane with you. Silk oil uses an unshorn cotton, which is basically a more natural, less processed form of cotton that has a lot more character, a lot more texture to it, like I said. You can see when some of the finish starts to wear off the jacket. It looks a lot fluffier, not like very smooth. When you get to thorn proof cotton, that is combed and calendared cotton. So the cotton is basically straightened, flattened, and perfected, and then it's run through a calendar process, which picture these two really hot rollers the cotton goes through that. And what happens is, since cotton is woven, when it goes to these rollers with heat, it compresses the weave a lot and basically seals it. So all those threads are getting way, way closer together. So close, in fact, that the cotton actually looks shiny on one side, like very glassy because it's so smooth. Now that combined with wax really, really seals and makes the jacket very, very smooth. So it becomes closer to that glass pane where when you walk through a thorn, it doesn't snag on the jacket or go through it. It kind of just goes off a little bit. Now I was, playing in the thorns before and my jacket seems fine, it's a little scratched up, but I did a review on a Taylor Stitch Winslow parka that is combed cotton. It's very, very glassy, it's a very different texture. You could check that out if you'd like to, but that's the main difference. So what you get with thorn proof then is added wind resistance and added water resistance just because that weave is so much tighter. Now I know what you're thinking, Michael, this jacket has a ton of different details. Can you give us a rundown of everything? Sure, why not? It's a beautiful fall day, I got nothing but time, and we're going for a hike. Well, this is a load of barnacles. I guess I'll go home. How peaceful. This jacket quickly became one of my favorite jackets because it is just so detailed and there are all these different features and it's very modular. So let me tell you about those and then, you know, we'll do other things. I'll talk about the jacket more. The most obvious fun fact I feel like about a barber jacket is that the zipper is also a bottle opener. What's up? Welcome to the Barber Bar. I'm Michael. This is a non-alcoholic sparkling beverage. Oops, shouldn't have shaken that. I don't drink, so I, unless I'm having a nice big bottle of Sodi Pop, I, there's probably no reason I would ever use it. But other than that though, when you're looking at this jacket, you'll notice that there is metal along the corduroy collar. That is because there is a snap on hood, which I highly suggest you get because to me, Getting a barber jacket without a hood is fine on days like this, but any other day, since people usually don't wear hats as much anymore, I feel like the hood should come included with the jacket. Not attached, but just with it. But also this jacket would look cool with like a casual baseball cap too, so I guess it can go either way. Moving outside of that though, this jacket is tartan lined, which is, it's actually a very thick and coarse fabric. It's not smooth or anything like that. It's like a very, very heavy woven material. That's tough and will stand up to time. But even if it rips, Barbara has a great repair program where they will basically do anything to fix your jacket and add all these different colored patches. So as you wear the jacket, it gets more characterized and stuff like that, which is very cool. The jacket is half lined, it's not full lined, but on the side, you'll notice that there is also zippers. That is so you can zip in a quilted lining. They used to have, I think it was an acrylic, not fur, but you know, fur, synthetic fur lining. So that way you can wear this deeper into the seasons. I don't think I'll get one of those because I'd rather wear a sweater. And overall, every detail of this jacket seems really, really well executed, down to the fact that the Bedale, not the Ashby, also has storm cuffs, knit storm cuffs, so if it's raining and you have to put your hands up, water doesn't go down your sleeves as easy. And what's missing from my Taylor Stitch Winslow parka, which annoys me every single day, is a storm flap. But on this jacket, there is a storm flap, so you can zip it up, then storm flap it, so water won't run through the zipper. This incredibly beefy, intense zipper, which is also gold and a very nice accent to the jacket. Then there are also two other snaps, and for a second, I couldn't figure out what those were for. That is for the throat latch, so when it's raining, you can pop up the corduroy collar, cinch it closed, so that way water doesn't get in as easy, especially paired with the hood. 
really convenient. There are also two moleskin lined hand warmer pockets at the top of the jacket, which are really great. They keep your hands nice and cozy, but also it's kind of a look to stick your hands in the big dumpy pockets below so you can go either way. But all in all, every single piece of this jacket feels like it is worth the money. It is perfectly executed. There's a ton of thought that goes into it. The stitching is beautiful. The fabric is beautiful. All these other details and I love it. I love it, I love it, I, I'd marry it. While we're here, I feel like I should just tell you, there is a catch-22 with the whole Barbara patina thing, and that is, as you wear in a Barbara, it's famous because it gets this great patina. You can see all these different colors, all these different shades of green coming through the jacket. The only issue there is with waxed jackets in general, usually that means that there's also a lack of oil or wax in that part, so the jacket is not as water resistant as normal. So you get the beauty, but you lose a little bit of the practicality, which some people might be like, uh-oh, can't have that happen. I might be in that camp. Okay, so since the rain didn't really work out, I did already put this jacket in the shower and stand in the jacket to see what would happen. First things first, a lot of people say, you know, they're not really waterproof, they're not really even that water resistant. That is not necessarily true. It depends on what stage your jacket is in with the wax on it. So if you have a brand new jacket that just got weatherproofed, it's gonna be really water resistant. But if not, if you've worn it for a while, like a few seasons, it's starting to turn a lighter green or something like that, it won't be that waterproof or water resistant and water will come right in. Yeah, this jacket is great. Obviously a shower kind of simulates like a downpour and the jacket didn't leak at all. It has a brand new coat of wax and oil on it because I just bought it. So it's basically impenetrable, although there was this uh, story or something I read, and I think it was like a diary from a fisherman, and he basically said like, they're the worst storms while he was out on the water, were when the water finally pierced through your oil skins, which these are oil skins in this case scenario, and then you were just cold and soaked and wet. So these aren't waterproof, but they are very, very, very water resistant when they are properly treated. So I'm assuming you'll be fine. In a downpour even, I know a lot of people say you won't be, that sounds like people that don't regularly upkeep their jackets, but for the most part, you should be good. This jacket to me really feels like a jacket that I want to take with me everywhere I go. It feels like a companion, it feels like a buddy. That's the whole idea behind the Iron Snail clothing line too. Like, not that a jacket's living, but that you should be able to kind of put your own tail on the jacket and wander with it and just, you know, enjoy it and take it with you and watch it get older and better as you get older and worse. And then you start to love it more and more as you use it. So anyways, that's why I like Barber. I highly suggest if you were debating on getting one, you get one. They're great. And so are you. I'll see you next week. Oh, next week is a special Friday the 13th episode. Not the date, but the movie. So, should be fun. Are these episodes? I can't even tell. <laughs>